Let's discuss history recovery for the Pi interface for Emerson Delta V batch, using EVT files as our example. As a reminder, our event frame has a start time on January 8th of 2019 and an end time on January 10th of 2019. To understand real time and recovery mode, let's hop onto livelibrary.osisoft.com. And here we are on livelibrary.osisoft.com. I'll go to Interfaces and Connectors and say View More. Go to Pi Batch Interfaces. How Pi Interfaces for Batch and Manufacturing Execution Systems Work interface modes. And there's five different modes, but we're going to only be talking about real time and recovery. And in real time mode, the interface is monitoring the data source and creating equivalent batches or event frames in the Pi system. But what's important to note here is that if you do stop the interface and restart it, the interface will do some small amount of recovery to recover the data that was that had newly come in since the last time the interface had been shut down. But in this video, we're going to spend most of our time talking about recovery mode. And there's a couple different ways to run recovery mode. One is to specify both a start and an end time. And the interface will gather the data from the source that is between those time periods. And we're going to talk a little bit about more about that in just a second. Before we do that, though, let's discuss what happens if you specify the start time, but not an end time. And if you do that, the interface will recover data back to that start time up until now, and it will continue to run and continue to run in real time mode. So it's very, inter uh, very important to remember. So let's go back and discuss what happens when you specify both the start and the end time. For this example, obviously you're going to be recovering batch four and batch five since they're fully encompassed by the start and end time. But you will also recover batches one, three, and six because those batches at least partially overlap with the recovery time that you've specified. To show this an example, in an example, let's take a look at our event frame in Pi System Explorer. And as a reminder, our event frame spans from January 8th, 2019 to January 10th, 2019. So what I'm going to do is delete this event frame and then specify my recovery start time from January 15th, 2019 and restart the interface. And we expect that the event frame does not get recovered. So first I'm going to stop the interface. I'm going to delete the event frame. In Event Frames Interface Manager under Operational Settings, I'm going to change the start time to January 15th. Hit Save. And then before I start it up, make sure I have my message logs going. And I'm going to start the interface. And it quickly noticed that that file is outside of the time range of recovery. So it never actually recovered anything. And sure enough, no batches were created. And if I go to Pi System Explorer, I can hit refresh or let's do a new search. And sure enough, no event frames got created. So let's stop the interface. And let's try specifying the recovery start time to be during the event frame. And the event frame starts on January 8th and ends on the 10th. So I'm going to specify my start time on the 9th. And in this case, we do expect the event frame to be recovered. So I'll click Save Settings. Bring up my message logs and start up my interface again. It finds the file and has to do the recovery on it. And if I look at my summary, it 
sure enough, one batch got added. And if I go to Pi System Explorer, I'll do a new search. And there's my, my batch from that EVT file. Let me stop the interface. Delete my event frame. And I'm going to move this EVT file out of that folder. And actually, I already have it there. So I'm just going to delete it. And instead, I'm going to move an EVT file into the folder from 2020. So if I start the interface at this point in recovery from 2019, it processes this file from 2020. And then I drop in the old file from 2019. To, do we expect it to get recovered? And actually, we don't, because the interface will have said, OK, I'm going to recover from 2019. Now I'm recovering files from 2020. These are my most recent files. So if you drop in something older, it's going to say, I've already recovered that stuff. I'm not going to process that now. But you could force it to recover that file by, again, restarting the interface and saying, recover everything from 2019. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So as a reminder, I have my interface here with recovery going back to January 9th, 2019, but I have a file in my EVT folder from 2020. And I'm going to start my interface. There it found the file from 2020. It's right here. And we'll let that scan. And here you can see it created one batch or event frame. And if I go back to Pi System Explorer, there it is. And you can see this one is from 2020. Now let me drop in that file from 2019. And we'll wait for the interface to process it. And when it does find the file, it actually comes up with this error and says that file is abandoned because we've actually already moved on to data from 2020 because we've processed more recent EVT files. So even though the, the recovery time was specified as 2019, if we've processed more recent files, it's not going to go back and process something that's just dropped into that folder. However, let's force it to go through everything in that folder again by just restarting the interface with that recovery start time of January 9th, 2019. And here we see it found both files and it's going to be recovering them. So we'll let that recovery finish. And we can see here it did end up creating another batch. This is the one from 2019. Add is only one because the one from 2020 already existed. I'm going to do a new search. Uncheck all descendants. And sure enough, here's the batch or event frame to, from 2020, and here's the one from 2019. So by forcing or restarting the interface again, it forced it to rescan the entire folder going back to the recovery start time. And this is actually important to know that it can be dangerous to keep a recovery start time. We wouldn't suggest that you frequently rescan that folder because if you have many EVT files and you restarted the interface, it may take a very long time for it to complete history recovery before you start getting back into real time mode. There are some additional time settings that we should discuss, and these are all available on the time settings tab. And we're going to discuss the cache time, the abandoned batch timeout, and the max query time in days. So let's start with the cache time. And this information is actually available in livelibrary.osisoft.com. So let's hop on over there again. If I go to PyVenFrames Interface Manager and the Time Settings tab, 
here's the cache time. And it specifies how long completed events are retained in memory. So let's say a batch closes and your cache time by default is going to be one day. So within 24 hours or in 24 hours after that event frame has closed, the event frame is going to be removed from memory. Well, why is that important? A couple things. If there's late arri arriving data or if you have merge turned on, this is very important because if you are trying to merge two event frames that have the same name and one of them has already been removed from memory, the merge won't work correctly. So you definitely want to leave cache time at least the amount of time that a event frame would be closed until the next event frame comes in that you would like to have it merge with. The next setting we'd like to talk to talk about is abandoned batch timeout. And this specifies how long a batch would remain open before it's considered abandoned, plus the cache time. So in this example, this batch here has remained open, the ABTO, and if it remains open, the cache time. Even if additional events had come in related to the batch, like sub-batches or uh, child event frames are opening, but it has not actually closed the interface would end up closing that event frame. So ABTO needs to be longer than the longest event frame that you expect. And the final setting is the max query time. The maximum query time helps with memory management. If the interface needs to retrieve one year's worth of data, and you had a maximum query time of 30 days, it will break that query up into 30 day sections. So for situations where memory management is an issue, it can be useful to decrease the value because it can go gather that data, process it, and then remove anything from the cache as, as necessary uh, before going into the next cycle. However, if you decrease this value too much, it can also have negative consequences because you would be making a very large number of queries, for instance, to your SQL source. Now you should understand how history recovery works for the Pi interface for Emerson Delta V batch, in addition to some of the more important time settings for the interface, including cache time, abandoned batch timeout, and maximum query time.